folks, it's DIY Guy123 here bringing you another do it yourself video. This is a continuation of a series of videos on my channel about do it yourself alignment using basic equipment. One of the pieces of equipment is turn plate, as you can see right here. I have another video that discusses how to use them to measure caster. Now, they are two inches thick, and you need to roll the vehicle up on top of them. When you're rolling a vehicle up on something that has basically a 90 degree to the floor surface, one of three things will happen. Either the tire will roll up like that, which is the desired effect, or you'll come up to it and this piece will tip up like this and you know it'll either spin forward or it'll, it'll kind of slam down as the wheel rolls up. That could reposition this, which isn't desired, or it'll just walk ahead as the wheel rolls. It'll just get pushed that way. So I wanted to come up with a method to make sure that the turn plates didn't slide forward and they are two inches thick which meant the vehicle had to be two inches off of the ground before it rolls onto there. We made these out of two by eights and another half inch piece of plywood on the top and so when the wheel gets up to the height right there before it rolls on the turn plate it's already at the height of the turn plate. You also want the rear wheels to be raised two inches as well so that the vehicle is still level. If you had four wheels that are trying to rise up an inch and a half all at one kind of one time it requires a fair amount of gas pedal to bring the vehicle up that high and that has a tendency to spit the ramps out because of the drive wheels gripping onto this and spitting it out. So I wanted to avoid that. There should be a one ramp like this one, the wheel comes up onto that and then this wheel doesn't have any further rise and then this ramp and then this ramp and then this ramp as the vehicle's rolling. The benefit of that is you can idle up. My pickup truck idles high enough I don't even need to touch the gas. The rear wheels have a stopper. When they come to a stop, I want the front wheels to be in the center of those turn plates without having to get out and look at it. Full length, shorter ramp. Then this one is the next one with its spacer. And then finally, this one is the shortest with its spacer. Now you'll notice these ramps, this one, this one, and this one all have a taper here to ease the transition of the vehicle up on to the ramp. You don't want that with your spacers. You want 90 degree angles with your spacers so that when you position them up against the tires, it comes up and contacts the tire an inch and a half off the ground. It doesn't try and wedge in. I think this is a more precise way of positioning the spacers. Basically with the vehicle park, you push all of the spacers and the ramps and the turn plates up against the wheels. Then you remove the spacers. Then you can very gently and without really any gas pedal, roll up and when you feel the rear wheels back bump up against these stops you're in the center and remember this one is not tapered because there's no spacer there so it's a 90 on that one that's the exception for the ramp back here this is the full length ramp so you'll see a drive on and then rise up the two inches and there's a stopper right here so this one and i space it out using a spacer i'll remove this spacer if we come over here i'll remove this spacer and I'll remove this short spacer. Okay, there's the back one. Okay, so you see the back wheel came up and I could feel it come up against this stop. I'm gonna take the wheel chalk and put it back there so the vehicle won't roll for it. You see this side perfectly lined up at the center of that turn plate and we're aligned center this way as well. The next thing you do is remove these pins and using this method of driving up on ramps, see how easy those pins were to remove? It's not quite as easy if you lower the vehicle down. You'll notice that the marker for zero is lined up with the arrow and then we will be able to take our caster and camera measurement. And when I wanna pack them up, I've written on this one bottom left, so it's in that position. I've put markings on them. Two lines or three lines. So I know that this one, and I know that this one goes, this one goes right there. And I could put a ratchet strap around them in the front and the back, and that keeps them all bound together for easy carrying. It's a one-handed affair to cart it, just like this. If this helps, leave me a comment and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects.